Well, welcome to the show, and thanks so much for joining us. Lucas Black is expanding his horizons far, far beyond Fast and Furious to include a faith-based feature. Well, plus, Leanne Rimes is at it again with a new project about her faith in God. Here's Ephraim Graham with the latest in entertainment. At number five, you can't see me. We all come from different walks of life. We all do different things, but we're in this room for one common goal, and that's because we want to make dreams come true. And this entertainer is breaking records when it comes to making children's dreams come true. Actor and wrestling legend John Cena has broken the world record for the most wishes granted through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Cena has now granted 650 wishes, helping fulfill the desires of children with critical illnesses. His long-standing relationship with that foundation began 20 years ago. He even gave out the foundation's 1,000th wish back in 2012. And his wishes will certainly continue as he is still their most requested celebrity. You can't see me. John has granted more wishes than any other celebrity in the history of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I've always said that being a part of Make-A-Wish and being able to contribute to the Make-A-Wish Foundation is something extra special. At number four. Shout this with me. Timing is everything. Shout it again. He's been called America's preacher, and his reach is expanding yet again. Bishop T.D. Jakes is coming to another small screen near you. The Texas preacher reached a deal to stream his ministry content to Amazon Freeview. He shared the news at his final Women Thou Art Loose conference just days ago. The new platform is called the T.D. Jakes Fast Channel. The free service will provide 300 hours of content, including Jakes' sermons and information on subjects like well-being, leadership, and business. The best things in life takes time. At number three. We're beautiful like diamonds in the sky. Counting down to Super Bowl with big news for the halftime show and a big change in its sponsorship. It's official. Rihanna will be the headline performer at next year's Super Bowl 57 halftime show. The news was revealed Sunday afternoon when both the NFL and Rihanna posted a photo of her holding a football. And comes just days after the NFL announced Apple Music is taking over sponsorship of what the league calls the most watched musical performance of the year. At number two. Oh, I lived a whole life thinking I knew how my heart could handle love, love I thought I knew. It's new music from country music star Leanne Rimes. She calls this latest project God's work. It was the first thing that jumped out at me. We, we had a whiteboard with all of these titles written on it, and this was one of the first songs we wrote for the record. And I just knew that I wanted that to be the title. It's a new declaration of faith for the singer who told Forbes magazine, I kind of ran away from God for a long time. I was raised Southern Baptist, and my frustration was we were brought up with the messages of love, acceptance, community, and forgiveness, but no one's living them to the fullest. And I felt like everything that was flowing through me for this album was a part of that. Didn't ever think that I could ever say I promise you. At number one. All right, guys, this is going to be super fun. Clean our time to get to know each other. Co-pilot Ben, we ready? Captain. Passenger Sam. More like hostage. It's a new role for actor Lucas Black. First one out the other side. Who starred in Fast and the Furious. They can say all they want. We're just here to play ball. 42 and multiple seasons of the hit television series, NCIS New Orleans. Lucas, how did you come to Legacy Peak? What happened? Yeah, great question. Um, it was an answered prayer for me and my family. Father, I need your help. I tried to plan the perfect trip. And I wanted to give these kids something I never had. This is his very first faith-based film, now streaming on the PureFlix platform. I think for a long time, entertainment has undermined the fatherhood role. And, um, you know, so for Legacy Peak to be a, uh, a story about fatherhood, and uh, to empower fathers out there. And it's one that the whole family can watch. And uh, it's wholesome entertainment uh, was a blessing. Time to get up. 
First, let's start off with a prayer. Our most loving Father, help us find our way. Well, Ephraim, welcome back to the show. So yeah. Lucas Black hitting the screens again. New faith-based film called Legacy Peak. Tell us about the story. It is his first faith-based film. He actually said this was an answer to prayer. He decided to leave NCIS New Orleans a few years ago, and when he did, he and his wife had no idea what was going to come next, but he and his wife jointly prayed that they wanted to use his platform to do more to spread the love of Christ. And this story uh, celebrates fatherhood uh, and allows him to do just that. He's very excited about the project, and we've got a bit of a tease for you because in our talks with him, turns out he's also going going to be playing a role in the film on for King and Country and their family's arrival in America and their life. So he's going to be in that as well. I asked him, were he, was he going to don uh, an Australian accent? That is not going to happen. He's going to play the country family who helped the family when they got to America. He's got the country accent yeah. now. <laughs> he said he wasn't giving up that he's country not accent. He's going to go all, all Aussie on him. Sorry. No. <laughs> That's funny. It actually looks like a really good movie. Yeah, it is a fun film. Uh, and to watch his journey uh, as someone engaged to a, a woman who lost her husband, uh, who has two children, and he's trying to navigate the children loving him because she already loves him. It's mm. nice to watch this play out. Yeah, it looks good. Well, we got to turn to country music. Mm -hmm. Leanne Rhymes just released a new project called God's Work. What else can you tell us about it? It's a beautiful project, and as she said, she is now embracing and celebrating more of her faith. It's something that she ran from, and I will say that the album is titled God's Work, and there's a song on the album called God's Work, and I love it because it talks about sort of... Uh, us wrestling with that and finally realizing that we are actually God's creation. And a lot of times the things that stop us uh, aren't God. It's us stopping ourselves and we need to recognize who we are in him. She has a lot of duets on this, including with Aloe Black, who you see right there. She also uh, has Sheila E. on the album. Uh, Ziggy Marley's on the album. It's a beautiful uh, project to listen to. A uh, nice blend in that country music. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It looks right. good. looks really good. Big changes to the Super Bowl's halftime show. What are the details? Well, the, the big thing uh, is Apple, really. I mean, Pepsi has long sponsored the halftime show, and now Apple is going to be doing that. Apple Music and many thinking that because Apple Music is now being a part of this, we realize that Apple certainly got a lot more access to music than Pepsi would have. What doors will this open? Uh, we will see. Uh, and for those who are fans of Rihanna, who has not done anything live in, I want to say, six to seven years, uh, will actually be back on stage performing again. So so we'll be looking to see who she brings on stage with her because that's uh, a short amount of time, but a lot of time to be solo. <laughs> yeah, do you yeah. think she will? Do you think it'll be not just her? I, I think there'll, there'll be some things cooking up from what I'm hearing. Um, even Dr. Dre is kind of advising on what that show should look like. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, Dr. Dre is <laughs> yes. giving his advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, well, big things are on the horizon for Bishop T.D. Jakes. What can we expect to see next from the man known as America's Preacher. Well, he's got some 40 plus years of ministry and a catalog that runs it. And he goes, this is the first time Amazon has uh, struck such a deal with him. Naturally, they've got some of his scripted work, but they actually came and approached him and they want more access to uh, his archives of sermons, some unscripted material. This will begin in December. Uh, people will be able to access it. This is part of Amazon's free streaming platform that is called Free V, and there'll be at least 300 hours of content to begin. So starting in December, you'll be able to access that and it'll be available in the U.S., the U.K., as well as Germany. Wow. Yeah. Good for TD. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like for Amazon. <laughs> yeah. uh, and please go watch it because yeah. the more hours, they measure every single minute that's watched, the more hours of Christian content that yes. gets consumed on Amazon will encourage them to include even more. Yeah. That is a great point. We can show them that this is what we want to see. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, John Senna is breaking records when it comes to making children's dreams come true. Tell us more about Make-A-Wish. He has done this for more than 600 children, 650. Mm. Make-A-Wish Foundation grants uh, wishes for children who are severely ill, many of them facing death, and more than any have asked to speak and meet John Cena, and he has done it for 650. The most anyone has done next to him, 
200. Wow. 200. The Guinness Book family calls this a Herculean record, and we certainly understand why. His heart is amazing. Uh, and just to see the interaction with these children and what it does for them, it warms your heart. And he says he literally will stop anything that he's doing to make sure that one of those children's wishes come true if they call for him. Wow, hey. that's beautiful. No, actually, I actually saw him. I did. Chesapeake. Really? Just yeah, it <laughs> made was, a lasting it was, impact. It was a long time ago, but yeah, he was like walking really fast. I think he was trying not to like, you know, he just be in and out. Mm. But people, I think, recognized him. I was like, is that John Cena? <laughs> anyway, wow. so yeah, that was years ago. That Pretty was cool. Years ago. Yeah. All right. Well, Ephraim, thanks for being with us all the, for all the latest in entertainment news. Just check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. Leck is a single mom who made a special promise to her son and daughter, and she vowed never to break it. So she was determined to keep her promise, even when she and, even when she and children were starving. The day Leck's husband abandoned their family, Leck made a promise to herself and to her children. I promised that I would take care of them, that I would love them and never leave them. But Leck's promise would soon be tested. With her limited income from part-time jobs, she could barely provide food for them to eat. Sometimes, Mom mixed rice with sugar for me and my brother. I wish there was more for us, but my mom had no money. Lex San Noom told us they also borrowed food from neighbors when the money ran out. Mom wouldn't eat with us. So I said, Mom, I won't eat everything, so you can have some too. Then one day, as Lek borrowed money for food, a neighbor urged her to send her children to live at an orphanage. I was speechless. That really hurt me. I remembered my promise to my children that I would never leave them. Some nights, I couldn't sleep. I cried all night. I didn't know what to do. When CBN's Orphans Promise learned that Leck knew how to sew, we gave her a sewing machine and everything needed to start a home-based business. I've always wanted a sewing machine, but could never afford one. I'm so excited. A nearby factory soon contracted with Leck to make medical face masks. She also does tailoring and clothing repairs for her neighbors. Thanks to that new business, her income has tripled. Now, my mom can buy chicken and fish for me and my brother. I love my mom's cooking. I always say, thank you, mom. Thank you for giving me and my children a new life. I have strength and hope for the future. Wow, that thank you goes to our CBN partner. And because of your generosity, you just saw that that mother's income has tripled. They didn't have barely enough money to even, f she didn't have enough money to barely even feed her children. And here she is. Now she has a business and she's supporting her family. And that's what we like to do here at CBN. We not only like to give people a handout, but we give them a hand up. We teach them, we give them opportunities and resources to learn how to um, help their family and, and longevity in doing. That. So if you want to do that, if you want to help families, men, women, and children all around the world, I encourage you to become a CBN partner today. It's really simple. All you have to do is either give us a call or go to CBN.com, or you can do my personal favorite text to give. Just text CBN to 71777. From there, you will get a link, and then you click that link, and it, it sends you over to this giving page where from there, you can choose what level you would like to join at. There's different levels. You can join at 700 Club level, which is just $20 a month. Some of you can do uh, more than that, maybe 700 Club Gold, which is $40 a month. Maybe some of you are already at $40 and uh, the Lord's just pressing it upon your heart to maybe go up from there. You can do 1,000 Club, which is $84 a month. Just do whatever the Holy Spirit is laying on your heart. And I just encourage, uh, again, if you want to change the world and you want to do so while spreading the message of the gospel, become a CBN partner today. And when you do, we're actually going to give you something in return. It's our way of saying thank you for partnering with us. This is Gordon's latest teaching. It's called The Lord is my shepherd, a Psalm of David. It goes through Psalm 23 and really just breaks down the verses uh, and, and goes into the Hebrew meaning. There's so much treasure, so much, so much goodness in this. So if you want that and you want to change the lives of people all around the world, like you just saw in that story, partner with CBN today. Become a 700 Club member by giving us a call on your screen, 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? 
Shantae practiced voodoo. She also drank a lot, picked fights, and dabbled in drugs. She tried anything and everything just to escape the pain of growing up with a crack-addicted mother. I remember my mother wanted some money to get high, and I threw it on the floor. I was so angry. I just thought, you know, you're better than this. You better not stoop that low to pick that money up. I stormed out the house. If she did pick it up, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see her do that. Shantae Pulliam had to be the grown-up. She took care of her two younger siblings while her mom descended into an addiction to crack cocaine. She was my hero, and I had no one. I had no one but me. I didn't feel valued. I didn't feel important. I wasn't getting love. I felt kind of like, why did you give up on me? Why did you give up on us? Angry, afraid, and lonely, Shantae did poorly in school, constantly getting into fights. Then in the 10th grade, her mom sent her to a Catholic reform school. There was a sense of hope that this was gonna help me in some way. We would read scripture. We would start our day in the word of God. But those words didn't really come together until she went to a rap concert with friends. She didn't know the artists were Christians. I was looking to party, maybe do some drinking, some smoking, but they're talking about Jesus, how Jesus saves and how he heals and how he delivers. I walked up there and I gave Jesus my life. I felt limitless. It felt like there wasn't anything that I couldn't do once I had given everything to Christ. Shantae, it seemed, had put her past behind her and was finally on the right track. I became smarter, I became better, I became brighter, I became more peaceful, more dedicated. And so I, I wanted to continue my relationship with Christ. I wanted to continue walking in his light because everything was working for me, everything. Until she went to college. Now among a diverse group of people with different beliefs, lifestyles, and philosophies, Shantae started questioning her fledgling Christian faith. The battle in her mind had begun. It was a state of total confusion. And they challenge you, and you don't know how to defend yourself. They leave you kind of vulnerable. The onslaught of criticism and doubt sent her on a two-year search, leading her away from church and God. At one point, she even explored voodoo, believing it was part of her African roots. It was giving me an association to something, and I think that's what I was looking for. You know, where do I belong? Where am I supposed to be? Her lifestyle had become marked by partying, promiscuity, and drug use. But nothing fulfilled her need for acceptance and love. I was becoming what I knew and what I had seen, the environment that I had come out of. It was leaving me very empty, very empty. She believed she had strayed too far for even God to save her. I felt as if there was no redeeming from the things that I had done. He was not going to forgive me for that. Then one night, someone put something in her drink at a club. I started seeing colors. I started hearing voices. Then the fear came. You know, I felt very afraid. I felt very just in a panic. Awake for three straight days, she was admitted to the hospital, where she was told she'd had a brief psychotic episode. Sent to the mental ward, she was ready to hear from God. One day, it just hit me. I heard the Holy Spirit say, you have to make a choice, and you have to make the choice now. It was up to me whether I was going to walk away from all this unconditional love or stay where I needed to be to feel all his grace, his love, and his mercy. I just started crying, and I couldn't stop crying. I was asking the Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. You know, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I want a relationship with you. I repent, and I could literally feel chains falling off of me. I can feel the weight um, just falling, falling off of me. And I knew I was dealing with a real, loving, powerful, forgiving God. Shantae was released from the hospital a few days later after being diagnosed with depression and put on medication. 
Though she had a long road of healing ahead, she would never again doubt the love and truth of Jesus Christ. My greatest need from Jesus was to know that he is real and that I could call on him and he would be there. No matter where I was, no matter what I was doing, he would come through for me and I could depend on him. Today, Shantae is no longer on meds or battling depression. She's married to Don and runs a nonprofit to share God's love with at-risk girls. Her mother has been clean since 2001, and Shantae has restored relationships with both her parents. I serve a God that I can take any struggle, any fear, any doubt to Him without fear of, of Him condemning me. But I know He's gonna give me the grace to go through whatever it is I'm going through and shower me with that love that I didn't have. Shantae's journey is like a lot of us, uh, and, and you can pretty much say it's a universal. Everybody goes through, where do I belong? What, what's my purpose? What's, what's the meaning? But beyond purpose, beyond meaning, is the sense of home. Where do I belong? For Shantae, she tried a lot of different things, uh, trying to say, well, if my African ancestors practice these religious rites and voodoo, well, then I'm going to go experiment with that. If my friends in college are experimenting with drugs, well, then I'm going to go experiment with that. If, if clubbing and nightlife and drinking is the way to go, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Now, she was dealt a difficult situation. You know, she's growing up and her mother is addicted to crack cocaine. Where do you go with that pain? What, what do you do? Well, where do I belong? Well, if you're asking that same question, and, and maybe you don't have quite the pain that Shantae had, but you just have, where do I belong? I've got some great news for you. You come from God. Now... How, do, how does that apply to someone who's born to a crack-addicted mother? You belong to God. You come from Him. He breathed you into being. Now, with that breath of life that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, He gave you wonderful gifts where you are creative, that you're made in His image, that you're His child. You belong to Him. Now, with these gifts, it's pretty obvious we've gone our own way. It's pretty obvious we've messed this deal up. We've, we've pursued other things. We've fallen into the lie that somehow these experiences, whether it's with drugs and alcohol, nightlife, uh, strange religions, all of these are, well, if you, if you just try this, you'll find some kind of secret knowledge or secret experience. God wants to keep you from these things. God wants to keep you from them because they damage you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. He wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. And when you find that and you find that you belong to him, well, then you come running to daddy. Can you forgive me? Can you heal me? Can you set me free? Can you make me new again? And then you find the greatest purpose in life. Not only do I come from God, not only do I belong to God, I'm going to go to Him. I'm going to be with Him for all eternity. And you don't have to wait for eternity for that. You can have it right now. Here's the prayer for you. It's very simple. Jesus, if you're real, if you really are my savior, if you can really turn me around, if you can really make me new again, if you can really fill me with your love, if you can really forgive me, if you can do all these things, could you show up? Could you show up for me right now? If you pray that with all of your heart, he'll answer. If you want help with this prayer, we're here for you. We're not here to judge, we're not here to condemn, we're here to tell you God loves you. You come from Him, and He wants you home. Here's a word from Matthew. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. For Ashley, for me, for all of us, God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.
Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.